On today's show, you're going to meet an art dealer. Hello, I'm Shannon Skinner, and this is Extraordinary Women TV. My guest today is Marianne Katzman. She's the owner and director of the Katzman Cayman Gallery in Toronto. Now, before you meet her, just just so you know that later in the segment, before we take a break, I'll have my regular good to know minute when I ask my guests for their top success tip, and you're going to hear Marianne's. Well, Marianne Katzman, hello. Hello. Welcome to the show. Thanks for being here today. Thank you very much. Um, now. You're uh, uh, an art dealer, and I'm so thrilled to have an art dealer here on the show. Uh, I would love to have your job. <laughs> it's a tough job to have, I would say. How inspiring is it? I mean, how did you get your start in the arts world? Well, my background is in painting, actually. I studied fine arts at Western University, and then um, I graduated and I thought I would be a graphic designer, you know, having, you know, there, there are only basically two jobs you can have after graduating and, and one is to go for a teaching job or to get into graphic design and that's what I thought I would do. And the year that I finished, the graphic design market crashed, so there were no jobs. Yeah. So. I went out, just newly moved to Toronto and kind of walked the streets trying to figure out what to do, applied for jobs here and there, nothing was coming. And I noticed a Help Wanted sign in a small art gallery on Young Street. And that was the beginning of it. So you just walked in and said, I want a job, they hired you and then you learned the ropes. And I learned the ropes. And I basically ran that little gallery um, top to bottom, I did every part of it. Now you, you at some point, you got married and you and your husband moved to Shanghai. Yes. What took you, what took you there? How exotic. <laughs> it was an incredible opportunity actually and mm. my husband had a colleague who um, has a film and media company in Shanghai and offered us an opportunity to go work there. My husband's background is in theater so it was perfect. He'd be working in film and I would be doing art direction. So we packed up our bags and off to Shanghai we went. So what is life like in Shanghai? I mean, what was your experience like? It's pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, 14 hour days and, you know. Maybe some things don't change, <laughs> depending on, you know, seven your days location. A week. Yeah, seven right. days, okay, got right. it. And it was, it was, and you know, the population there is incredible. I mean, it's something close to 20 million people in the city, yeah. which is like the population of Canada in one city. But I mean, how inspiring! There are a lot of artists there. It's a very cre creative vibe. I, I and hear. it's a really energetic art scene there. I mean, it's really new and and um, you know the you know communism is just kind of opening up there. So people are really really excited about uh, this new world of art. So at some point, um, you came back to Toronto, and you found out. Uh, um, well, it brought me back from Toronto, actually. Okay. I, um, I had worked for Leo Kamen for about four years before I went to China. And, and so just for perspective, Leo Kamen is... Um, is a well-known art dealer in Toronto, Canada, and has had a gallery for almost 30 years. And, um, and I worked for him for about four, as I mentioned. And... As it, I mean, it, it was kind of heartbreaking to leave him, but I knew that, you know, this was an amazing opportunity to go to Shanghai that we couldn't pass up. So we were in communication while I was there, we're friends, and um, I noticed he had a really funny show on in last April or so, and I, I asked him, why, why are you doing a group show in the high season? That doesn't make any sense. And he replied saying, you're on to me. I've decided to retire and close the gallery. And this is my homage to all of my artists. And so I said, no, no, you can't do this. You're a legend, your artists are amazing, you just can't close. And he said, well, you better come back. So through much trial and tribulation, I got back and I took over. So you took over from a legend. That's right. Now was that 
I mean, were you intimidated at all? Well, I learned a lot from Leo yeah. um, being there for the four years. And I think that we always imagined this would happen in some way. So, I mean, I was, I was excited, but I was also terrified because I knew that there were a lot of parts of the business that perhaps I wasn't prepared for. And, uh, but I was ready. I was ready to, to take it on. So, so you, you bought the, the, the gallery. Yes. Um, you put your own taste on it and your name on it That's as well. Right. That's which was, right. You know, really important. Putting your name on a, with next to a legend? <laughs> it's true. I mean, wow. it, it was a real dream come true. Yeah. I mean, it was, I've always wanted my name on the door of a gallery and there it was. And so, you know, it, it, it was a, a, an incredible opportunity, lifetime. Now, I had the opportunity to be at your gallery um, at a launch um, Christine Platt's um, company called Art Ventures, which, which, uh, which was a fantastic event, but what a great gallery. Maybe we can show some of the photos, uh, um, if we haven't already, I didn't see what was on the screen, but, uh, um, but what a great vibe. Uh, it's a building that's over 100 years old yeah. and you know it's got exposed beams as you can see and wood floors and, and I have a huge amount of space so I mean it's really incredible. Now what have been some of the challenges that you have faced as I mean as a woman um, owner you know female owner of an art gallery but also you've got the challenges of the arts world, which is just generally speaking challenging to make money in, um, as we know, is common, because yes. it's common knowledge. Um, but what have been the challenges for you? Well, initially, my challenges were, were pretty local in that um, I came back from China and needed to um, put together a fall and a spring of shows that should have been planned a year ago. So I had to, and none of the artists were ready to show. So I had to come up with some really innovative shows and things to, to put together and, and artists outside of the gallery um, to put together my shows for um, fall and spring. And, and that was really challenging initially. <clears throat> All, uh, certainly because you know, you're just beginning this gallery and you want to make sales, you want to you know, start things happening, get it rolling, and, and you don't want a gap at all. Right. Well, starting any business is <clears throat> difficult, isn't it? I mean, Absolutely. no matter what. Yes, yeah. And then, you know, taking over from a legend like Leo, I mean, no one really knew who I was in industry. And that must have added some pressure. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So it took a lot of me getting to know people personally, doing a lot of footwork and, and and making a lot of friends. I mean, I think that that's really been key for me, is making a lot of friends. So, we're, so you've got these challenges, but you've, you've, you've made it a go. It's a success. I mean, where do you get the support to keep going? Well, I mean, you have to balance your shows so that um, if some show doesn't pay off as well as others, others do. So it, I find it's kind of cyclical, up and down. There are good times and there are bad times. So, I mean, nothing's a guarantee. I mean, that's really the scariest part. And do you, I mean, you must get a lot of support from your husband and your of friends. Of course. Yeah. Of course. I had the opportunity, of course, to meet him at, uh, at the Art, Be Art Ventures event. Um, lovely. He's a lovely gentleman. He is. He's, yeah. he's amazing and he's yeah. my number one supporter. Yeah. I mean, emotionally and he also physically comes to the gallery and does a little blood sweat and tears into it and, and I mean he does amazing things for me. Now um, how do you choose by the way and we're going to be talking more about the artists um, that you're, you're show, showcasing uh, after the break but I mean how do you choose what art to to show to to take on as clients. I mean, there's so many wonderful artists out there, and how can you possibly choose? It is really tough. I yeah. mean, you really want to have a very high caliber of artist um, who's creating interesting work. And, you know, as a dealer, um, my personal taste comes into it a lot, but then I have to weigh that against saleability and also 
marketability. I mean, what's going to be really interesting? What's going to be, what are people going to talk about? You know, when they leave the gallery, will it bring more people in? So you, you have to balance all of these things. And, and the perfect artist comes from one that has all of those things. Saleable, interesting, you know, beautiful, all at the same time. And uh, now they're not, they're international artists, so it's not just a focus on Canadian, is that right? Well, I would say 95% Canadian. Are Canadian? Yeah. Okay. Yes. And, and most of them have at least lived in Canada at some point in time. So I know them personally. But yes, 95% Canadian. So, Marianne, we're just going to take a quick break. Uh, and before we do, I've got my Good to Know Minute. And I know you've got a great success tip, so jump right in there. My tip is never to give up your dream. No matter how far away from it you get, if you're focused on it, it will find you. That's so, what I believe. <laughs> so never give up on your dream. That's good to know. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, more with Marianne Katzman, owner and director of the Katzman Cayman Gallery in Toronto. So stay where you are. I'm Shannon Skinner. Welcome back to the show. And I'm speaking with Marianne Katzman, who is the owner and director of the Katzman Cayman Gallery in Toronto. She's an art dealer. We're talking about all things art today. Now, you have a mandate, and an, an interesting one, um, uh, which is really in three parts, is to promote the brave ideas from Canadian artists, um, to encourage sales of experimental art, and foster a new generation of collectors. Mm -hmm. um, why is this important to you? Um, it's very important to me to, first of all, um, expand Canadians' understanding of, of what's current, what's experimental, and what's happening out there right now. Um, it's, it's tough to get people into private galleries, and private galleries are really where things are happening and people are taking risks. We don't have the government backing us. I mean, if I don't sell art, I don't have a gallery. Right, so yeah. it's very important to me to have people understand that they can collect things that aren't just a painting on the wall. There are, you know, video works that you can play in your home while you have guests over, while you have dinner, while you have anything. And it creates this wonderful atmosphere. It's something moving. I mean, it's not a narrative. It's a piece of art, just like a painting. But it's, it's perfectly collectible. So, I mean, that's something that I really firmly am, am promoting and am striving to, to make gains in the art world. So, we've got some actually, um, some, some of the images from some of the uh, artists that you uh, are representing. And let's talk about this one. This is just really striking. This artist is Meryl McMaster. Mm -hmm. um, she's a recent graduate from OCAD. She's kind of my little rising star. Um, she looks at myth and sort of her background is, is half Aboriginal, so she looks at that kind of treatment of, of spirit and soul and, and costume as well, but kind of taking her own spin on it. And look at this one. This is just really interesting. It's very dramatic. It's amazing. And this costume she built herself, and they're made of balloons. Balloons? Empty balloons. Oh. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. And there's uh, now this one. I as as my personal favorite. I mean, look at the beautiful, vibrant it's colors. It's amazing. Just, it's 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 the very composition symbolic. is beautiful and it, it's so dreamy. It's such a lovely piece and it's very. She's so comfortable and natural at such a young age. It's quite amazing. Yes, yeah, you said she's uh, in her mid early mid early twenties. Yes. Yes. And there's another piece of hers. Like look yes. at this. This is really great. Now we've got another artist too. Um, we can just move on to the next uh, set of um, images. Look at this. This is April Hickox. Yeah. And she was actually Meryl's teacher at OCAD. Okay. So she's more of a senior level photographer. And um, with this series, she's looking through portholes. Right. And she's going along the St. Lawrence River and taking just these wonderful moody shots that look like they could be 20, 30, 40 years ago, but they were just recently taken. They are very moody. Now, she's, she's from Toronto? She yes. From Toronto? Yeah, she actually lives on Toronto Island. Oh, fantastic. Mm -hmm. And I know you've got a show coming up. Look at this. It's 
very, very JB. Beautiful. I know you have uh, her shows coming up uh, in your at your gallery. Yes, um, she's the contact show for us in May. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. And look at this. Wow. I love how she's captured. It looks like it's raining on. It is. On, oh, it is raining. It is, and the whole this whole series is called Rain, and they're all right. through the lens, kind of pointing to the fact that rain is falling on the lens, that the camera is there. Because as you can imagine, you couldn't just see that little water on your eyes. That would only happen if there's a lens in front of you. So it separates you from the scene. So you see that there's, a, there's another presence there. There's a camera. Do, do, for women that are women artists um, in Canada, do they have, uh, are you seeing that they're, they are any more challenged or any less challenged than the men? male artists in this country? Absolutely. I mean, I think yeah. that historically female artists have always had a tougher time at things, um, not being as well respected as male artists. And that certainly has perpetuated in Canadian art. I know that um, a few of my painters specifically have had a really tough time um, against the, the sort of abstract Canadian painter male force that was dominant in, in the 70s and 80s and 90s. So overcoming that has been quite challenging for, for many of them. So where do these artists, I mean, how do they, how do they get support to keep going? I mean, they, obviously they must have to find jobs or, I mean, do they find additional patrons um, who can cover their costs or how no, do they do it? Typically what happens is they're either teaching, right. and that's the majority of the time. Most of them are teaching. Uh, but there are one or two occasions when they can make a living from their art. Which is, which is what we all dream for them, you know, to right. sell enough for them that, that they're making a lovely living. Wow, that's really fantastic. Um, I mean, what are the skills, you know, and now going back to you, and thank you for sharing these images um, and talking about uh, these, these wonderful artists, and, you know, I wish them all the best uh, in what they're doing. Um, what are the skills that are required for you, you know, in, I mean, networking is really critical, but um, I mean, to, be, to survive as an art dealer, is there any other types of skills? Let's just say there's someone out there who's watching this interview who has a dream of one day uh, working in an art gallery or having or owning their own, mm -hmm. um, you know, what would you suggest to them? It really is a matter of um, understanding your clients and matching them up to the art that suits them. So, you know, I, I, I mean, a client will come to you and they may not know exactly what they're looking for, but if you understand them and, and their home or their tastes or, or just their personality, it's, it's really um, the gift is to, to be able to match the, that, them up with the art and the artist that, that they love and that they will cherish for the rest of their life. You know, what would life be like if we didn't have artists in this world? That's a scary world to think of. <laughs> I mean, artists add so much color and texture to our world. Yes. Um, you know, we were speaking earlier how uh, ideas, many of the ideas and innovations come initially from the minds of artists. It's true. I mean, before scientists can prove things, artists dream things up. So, I mean, we wouldn't have innovation if we didn't have artists. And I think it's integral to our culture and to the forwarding of, 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 of everything that Canadians should be. I mean, we should promote it and encourage it and support it in every way possible. And how can we do that? There are many ways. Yeah. Um, first of all, you know, go out and buy art from private galleries that are representing local artists. Therefore, artists are getting paid while they're alive. You know, not oh, very important. And you know, that's a struggling thing. I mean, artists don't make careers, in, typically in Canada, off of their artwork, and that's a shame. Whereas, you know, a banker makes money from being a banker. An artist has to have another job. So that's first and foremost what I promote. Um, other ways of, of supporting the arts are, are really to, to go out to public galleries and, and become members and, and support in those ways. It's, uh, all of these institutions need support as well. Do you, is there a fa do you have a favorite um, era of, of artists that you sort of gravitate to? Well, you know, my tastes are always, are always moving. 
because you know I, I love everything I see that's new. I mean, I'm, I'm drawn to things that are that are changing the way that I think today. Right. So I mean, I used to love certain periods. You know, the 1930s, the 1940s, and and now it's it's today. It's every moment that I see. People tend to, um, who maybe aren't as well educated in the world of art, will tend to um, gravitate toward probably the more popular ones like Monet. Sure. You know, names that they know mm -hmm. and that they recognize, but there's so many wonderful artists out there. And it, you know, you don't need an education in order to develop a taste for what's new and what's maybe not already known. Um, just going out to all the art galleries, you know, do a gallery hop once a month and you'll start to really develop your own taste for what's new and what's exciting out there. A gallery hop? What a great thing to do on a Sunday. Are galleries typically open on Sundays typically or close not. on Sundays? Typically not. Saturday afternoon Saturday is afternoon. the best day to do a gallery hop. Right. Gallery hop on Saturday. I'm going to put that into my calendar. What a great idea. Definitely do it. I mean, we have such great neighborhoods and little gluts of galleries. It's such a fun city to walk. Well, you know, there's a lot of people out there uh, who think Toronto is boring and its art scene is boring. What do you Not have to so. say about that? Not so. Um, I think that Toronto is one of the most interesting cities in the world. I mean, I'm biased because I live here and I want to live here. I mean, after living in Shanghai, I'd much rather live in Toronto. And that's because of the multiculturalism, the wonderful art scene that we have. And it's not too big and not too small. I just think it's a great city. Well, Marianne, um, unfortunately our time is up, but I have thoroughly enjoyed uh, this conversation with you and, and getting to know you and more about the gallery and about the art scene here in, in, in Toronto and in Canada. So thank you for coming onto the show, sharing your story uh, and your journey. Uh, and I wish you all the best with what you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Well, for more information about Marianne Katzman, um, you can find this interview and her bio uh, on my website at extraordinarywomentv.com. Uh, for more information about upcoming shows or past guests, uh, again, you can find all of that on uh, the uh, website extraordinarywomentv.com. That's also where you can reach me. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. So there's lots of places uh, that you can connect with me. Well, if you are interested in transforming your life, I hope this story has inspired you. You've been watching Extraordinary Women. I'm Shannon Skinner. See you soon.